Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct, and I'm here working on a bunch of baby stuff, but I thought it'd be great to talk about some tips that I can give you for working with alpaca hats to make them fit great. So alpaca fiber is a little bit different than working with regular wool, and I just wanted to spend a moment and talk about that. But before we get on to that, every week we have a prize, and for this last week it was for this lovely finito and if you haven't tried malabrigo finito i believe it's just um it um is super fine merino wool it this is not a super wash yarn machine it's not been treated to be machine washable but it is a great yarn see how soft it is it is just looks lovely you can see the halo on it so you can imagine how soft it is beautiful and which color was the winning color for this week just the fall colorway ah this was our colorway for the winter. Normally I would think the blue would be the colorway, but fall is beautiful. I love those brown tones. I'm a, I almost always choose those colors. So very pretty. And so all you have to do to get entered to win the prize is to post comments in the comment section. If you're working on a particularly lovely pattern, don't forget to post it in the comments and let us know what the name of the designer is and the name of the pattern so we can make it with you. Several people are totally lovely. Time. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to have you here with me. See my little royal baby alpaca copycat hat? Isn't that cute? Blue it's Sky, nice. um, it's made with uh, royal uh, petites from Blue Sky Alpaca. I don't think they make that yarn anymore. It's a discontinued yarn, but it's a fingering weight, so any fingering weight will do. And I thought I would talk about how I made my copycat hat size down and some a couple things that I did to make it look really good. And then here are the little um, cozy baby boots pattern. And of course you can see I did not knit it to the pattern. I changed the pattern. <laughs> it doesn't have any ties on it. And you can see the cute little pattern on the front goes all the way around the back of the little slipper. And you can see in the back here, see how this dips down like that? That's because I put a few little short rows in there that made it um, the heel um, go up a little bit higher to fit up on baby's foot a little bit higher since um, that'll make it a little nicer for the baby to wear. Royal Alpaca, I know a lot of people don't choose Royal Alpaca for baby products because they feel like they need to have machine washable. Are any of you out there fans of Royal Baby Alpaca for babies? <laughs> I am, I really like it. Um, my daughter, um, Claire, she had a little girl, Claire, and when Claire was newborn, she was always cold. And so I made her the baby alpaca um, set the hat and booties and socks and all different kinds of things and she, it helped her sleep to put it on her so totally fantastic and then what I told Lauren to do is when she's given baby a bath all you do is fill up put a little bit of water in the sink maybe one little squirt of maybe a uh, baby magic or something like that in the water and you just soak your little booties in there while the baby's having a bath and when the baby's done the booty's done <laughs> it's super easy so these um uh, hand washables are not that hard, especially look how small they are. I mean, what hand washing something this tiny is easy. It takes two seconds, two shakes of a lamb's tail. And then what I do is I squeeze out the excess water and I put it on the counter and by morning, ta-da, dry, ready to wear again. So tell me so, what we did this weekend. We actually got away. Yes, we did. We went up to Riley Creek, which is um, by at Sandpoint, and we went into Sandpoint and um, wandered around Sandpoint, there. Sandpoint, I know. Yeah, and it was totally fun. It was that beautiful, kind of cold. I've had a cold, so I had to wear my mask everywhere that I went to keep people safe from, I didn't want to give them the plague. <laughs> yeah, you're so. you better, right? I am uh, slowly getting better. I'm feeling better every day. And so when I get tired, I just take a nap. <laughs> it's all good. And I'm highly medicated, yes, with everything I can think of. Yeah, so I'm not hacking and coughing too much. So that's great. So let's take a look. I wanted to take a look here. And we can take a look and see what I did with my, um, the, this. Talk about alpaca, like what you, why you like it so much. Right. Um, 
Well, I, I just spoke about why I like it so much, but I wanted to talk in particular about how I size down the hat. Um, this is the copycat hat, and it, it looks like this. And the reason why they call it the copycat hat is it's this very popular hat that you can find in all the ski shops that's made for adults and kids. It's, it's everywhere. It's probably the uh, most worn hat of all time. And so um, someone came up with a, um, the pattern for it, and then I sized it down, and I'll tell you what I did and why I did each little thing. And um, so the copycat hat is, I don't know, I think it's really cute. It looks good on everyone, it, whether it's boys or girls. That's why this is a boy set, and then I have the little girl set mm -hmm. that matches it. They're going to vote on this, too. Yes. Oh, I forgot to tell you. When we were talking about our prizes, I forgot to tell you what's for this week. So you guys um, can vote whether or not we should send out the Bravo in this uh, honey colorway or the blue colorway. And um, if you haven't tried the Bravo Baby Alpaca Yarn made in Peru, pretty nice. It is a light worsted weight yarn and it would make a lovely hat. And that's why I'm giving it today because, you know, you can make one of these hats using this yarn. <laughs> and you can make it for an adult size if you want to. Or you can size it down like I did mine mm -hmm. and make a baby version of it. And that's our own brand, right? Yes, it's lovely, lovely soft yarn. And I love alpaca, but for some people, they're really adverse um, to um, making hats with alpaca because alpaca is very drapey and it can just stretch in 20 ways to Sunday. So let's talk about what I do to make my alpaca hats so that they fit beautifully and they, um, I don't have the same problem that everyone has. So when I was just writing down things that I do when I make my alpaca hats, number one, I love to use a ribbing pattern. So you'll see even in here, there's some ribbing in here. And the reason why I like ribbing is ribbing gives structure to a non-structured item, if that makes sense. <laughs> ribbing helps uh, maintain that shape of your lovely alpaca hat. And so I always like to use ribbed patterns for alpaca, especially when I'm using 100% baby alpaca yarn, because it'll just help maintain that shape and um, give it some structure where there otherwise would be no structure because alpaca is just that way. It's drapey and soft. And you can see the yarn here. It's just super soft and drapey when you knit it up. So giving using ribbing when you're making alpaca items is wonderful. Also, um, if you were making your hat and say you wanted it to be 20 inches in diameter, consider knitting um, your project. Um, with less stitches and making it smaller. One and a half to two inches smaller is recommended. That's usually what I do. So if I, I have a 20 inch head and I usually make mine about um, no bigger than eight and a half inches wide, because if I make it bigger than eight and a half inches wide, it's gonna be so loose on my head, I'll be running around the house and it'll fall off my head um, in short order. So just remember when you're knitting your alpaca hats, um, if you make them smaller, um, then you might normally make a wool hat, um, for instance, um, like merino wool or Peruvian highland wool. That yarn is much different than alpaca. It has a lot more structure to it. And so um, alpaca cannot be treated in exactly the same way as you would your normal wool. Otherwise, you will have a project that's too big and you'll have the same complaints that a lot of other people do out there. Also, another thing that I normally would never recommend, well, almost never recommend, there's always, <laughs> there's always exceptions, but if you take your alpaca and you knit it at a tighter gauge, you can take some of the drape out of your project and you will absolutely have a soft, lovely item, but it won't have quite as much drape if you knit it at a t on a tighter, uh, smaller needle. And alpaca can handle that. Where some other wools, if you did that, it would turn into a brick. <laughs> you would go, ooh, not good. But this fiber, you can do that. <laughs>
you can knit it on a tighter needle and you can have a project that you love. So I would um, go ahead and totally recommend that. So when I was doing my hat, see this twisted broom for this little baby? See, it's nice and stretchy. I mean, I really can stretch it wide. And so... Um, gives the baby a little more time to wear it, too. Yeah, yeah. And then I, di I did my hat uh, for this baby one. I did it on number two needles for the brim. And... Um, I did number four needles for the body of the hat to make sure it's nice and um, not too tight for baby's head. We don't want anything at all on the baby's head that's tight. And then you could see I did that provisional cast on, and you could see how nice it looks on the inside. Totally cool. Soft on their head too, yes, soft on their head. And normally, I'm not a huge fan of twisted stitches. I think it looks really cute on this hat. And the reason why twisted stitches aren't always my favorite stitch because they're not as pliable as a regular knit stitch. They're a little bit tighter. Um, because you're actually twisting the stitch when you make the stitch, it takes some of the give out of the actual yarn. Does that make sense? Right. So um, anyway, um, just keep that in mind when you're making your twisted brims for yourself. Um, you might need a few extra stitches because you're actually twisting the yarn and using up, um, taking that give out of the actual stitch. So using a few extra stitches works great. Right. And then I wanted to show you a little trick. Jim, I have to reach over to my hat over here. On these, if you look, um, you know, our knitting is done in a spiral. So when you're knitting, it's kind of going around and then it goes up a little bit. Then it goes around and it goes up a little bit more. It's more like, like a corkscrew. You can think of knitting. It's not, it's not straight when you're knitting in the round. It's like, more like a spiral at a little bit of an angle, right? So what that does with our purl rounds on our hat this is where the beginning of the round is and if you look on this hat i don't think see how there is a little bit of a jog do you see this little jog right here it goes up a little bit right so that's not cool i mean you could leave it that way because it's for a baby hat and most knitters i mean most people recipients of your knitwear are not going to notice it but me i do notice it so here's what I do. I do the little tiny trick. So I knitted one stitch past my stitch marker. So I got to back up a second and show you my little trick. And it's so easy to take some of that jog right out of there. So on these, I didn't do it on the top. I only did it on the bottom part to make it more, a little more straight. And it's a super easy little trick. So what I do, I'm going to move this stitch marker just so you could see it. What I do is I go down below here and I grab the stitch, not the stitch right, not that stitch, but this stitch right below it. One stitch below. And then what I do, let me put my stitch marker back on so I don't lose my beginning of the round. We wouldn't want to think it's one stitch over. Then I just purl that together with the stitch to the left of it. And what that does is it takes this little jog and it yanks it down <laughs> just ever so slightly. But if you look at it, you see right here, it makes it almost straight. It irons it almost completely out. Now, I want to show you that one more time because what I want you to do is see how easy it is to take the jog right out of your knitting so you do not have the problem. Let me go back here. That one goes on to my needle. Well, this one was that stitch right down there. So we're going to move this so you can see again. Not this one, not the pearl bump that's right under the needle. The one that's right next to it. Ta-da! Lift it up. Put it pearl two together. Ta da Jog is now almost completely gone. <laughs> Isn't that a cool trick? You know, I wish when I first learned how to knit that someone had told me all these little tiny tricks and actually explained it in a way 
that I could understand it and could do it. Because as a beginning knitter, things can be a little mind boggling, shall I say, when you first start knitting. But wasn't that easy? I think it's pretty easy. It's a great way to get a jog out of your work. So <clears throat> let's take a look on here. When I, I just wanted to go over this copycat baby hat, and this one can, this copycat uh, pattern is called the CC Beanie, and it's by Clementine Knits, and it can be found um, on Ravelry. It's a free pattern. It's uh, Clementine Knits or Emily Ingrid here. Meg, Meg can post it link. Yes. Uh, and Meg, if you can post that link for them, that would be great. And I'll just tell you how I did mine. Now, let's take a look at the top of this hat. Do you see how my hat follows the pattern all the way up? The pattern is not written that way. <laughs> I changed it. Because at the top of the hat, from right here, she had all knit stitches. So it was one big flat knit. And it didn't look as cute as maintaining the pattern. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you if you wanted to put a pom pom on the top of your hat, it's cool to do it the flat knitting way because you aren't going to see it anyway because you're going to stick a pom pom right in the spot where it would be visible. But if you just want to make yours more like a beanie and have it follow the pattern exactly, this is all also written under Kelly Loves Alpaca on Ravelry. That is my um, name for Ravelry and it's under copycat hat. I haven't posted this picture yet, um, but it has the information. So um, the way that I made my baby hat for the copycat hat was using US number two needles for the brim and then number four needles for the body of the hat. And then of course I used fingering weight yarn and I cast on 90 stitches. This hat I'm going to make um, a little tiny bit bigger because mom and dad are bigger. So the um, the baby will probably be a little bigger. Yeah. And so um, so when I made mine, I uh, this uh, alpaca yarn is fingering weight alpaca yarn. So you can use any fingering weight alpaca yarn. And then I for the copycat hat, pattern. All I did is um, I started with my t twisted rib for just under three inches. Then I folded it over. It gave me a brim that's like one and a quarter, not quite one and a half inches um, high. And then I did two knit ra uh, rounds and then I did my purl rounds. Now I wanted these purl rounds to match these purl rounds. And on this pattern, it calls for three purl rounds. So guess what I did? I put three purl rounds on here to make it look, make these more look like a set, you know, so they match. And then um, for the ribbing on here, I did three uh, rounds of ribbing. And I, I think that might have called for four rounds of ribbing. And I kept the knit, uh, the knit rounds in between was still two knit rounds in between each one. Sure, and sure. Um, uh, no, I just kept the ribbing rounds because it, it looks dimensionally, it, it's small enough that it looks, um, uh, proportional for a baby size. It looks fine. It doesn't look, um, it doesn't look off or too big. Some of the baby hats, if you look at the, um, the copycat hats for the baby ones, um, they made them using the exact adult instructions and it looks odd because there's too many it looks too many pearl rounds it's not small and petite looking it's kind of big and kind of clunky looking and it it doesn't proportionally play well if you know what i mean and so um yeah and then the big thing that i did on my fourth repeat i did the three pearl rounds two stockinette stitch rounds and then on my ribbing round i started my knit two togethers um, so that I could keep it in pattern. So every time I did a decrease round, I did it in the pattern. So um, I f used their exact decreases that it called for in the pattern. I just did it in pattern. So it was knit one round even, and then a purl two round across, and then purl two rounds, and then knit two together across the round. So I was just doing the same exact decreases that they did called for in the pattern. I just did it in this pattern. 
in these patterns. I kept whatever the pattern was to maintain it. And that made it look really nice. Oh, for um, I, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick before I finish up here is my Mrs. Hub slippers. We had, um, was it Carolyn? Yeah, Carolyn. Um, uh, Carolyn had talked something about um yes she was she's getting confused on mrs up slippers and you know you guys when i did the bottom of these slippers i used judy's magic cast on and did it as seamless slippers and um and so um this pattern when it starts right here at the back of the heel and when you're i have you flip your cast on over and add some more knit stitches so that the edge this edge right here can be maintained in stockinette stitch so you don't have pearl bumps running up at the very beginning it just didn't look as nice so i wanted to show you how i did that because carolyn Here's the thing. When I do something, I don't necessarily do it according to how everyone else uses it. I do it however works me, for me. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes that's way different than other people are used to. <laughs> They're like, hey, you're supposed to use this for toe-up socks. And I'm like, no, I'm actually using it for the back of my slippers. <laughs> And they're like, what? You can't do that. And I'm like, oh, yes, I can. Watch me. <laughs> so if you look at our pattern instructions for Mrs. Hub slippers, it tells you to cast on um, 17 and 18 stitches. So if we have one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight. 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12, 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, and 18. Ta-da! 18 on the back needle, 17 on the front. Okay, now turn it this way. Did you see how I put the two yarns in the center? Turn it over. What do you see there? Those are pearl bumps, right? So now all I want you to do is cast on six more stitches. So remember that when you cast on, you need to switch how you have your hands because the top uh, finger will do the bottom needle and the bottom finger will do the top needle. So then I, I'm going to do one, one, two, two, three, three. See, now I have all pearl bumps, but the last three stitches are knit stitches, right? So then I, I don't get too excited. This one right here is coming off the working yarn. Do you see how the working yarn's right here? And you're like, oh, I can't do a knit stitch. Read my lips. Yes, you can. Ignore everything that everyone else taught you. Just do it. <laughs> It'll work. Trust me. God is good. Okay. So then um, Carolyn's going, what? Now what do I do? Look at your right side set up row. So you're going to knit three. And I don't have a marker right here. Otherwise, I would have to go walk across the room and grab a marker. So you just pretend that I have grabbed a marker, but I haven't. Okay? So I've knit nine. And then this right here, because all these are pearl bumps, it's going to be garter stitch that I'm making, right? And when I knit, I'm only using half of the Judy's Magic cast on. So I'm knitting here, knitting around this side as if it's a magic loop, and then I turn and knit as if it's flat. See? And it'll tell you wrong side row. Row means turn your needles and knit as if it is flat. <laughs> it's super simple. What you guys should do when you're making this pattern, don't think. Do not think. Read the directions and do what it says. And, it works. and you will be a happy camper. And you'll go, oh, dear Lord, what did she do with that cast on? She did something totally different than what you're supposed to do. But, hmm, it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's what I want you to do. You go ahead and you just start knitting with that little Judy's Magic Castle. And guess what you're making? You're making the very back of your heel. See this 
pearl bumps right here. That's Judy's magic cast on. <laughs> okay, Carolyn. Now I want to see your finished project when you're done with your slippers. Yeah, so many get people get stumped by this Mrs. Tubbs slipper pattern. And it's a free pattern that we offer. And it's using Judy's magic cast on. And you just use one half of it as if it's knitted in the round. And the other half you turn as if you're knitting flat. And it gives you a finish free slipper that looks beautiful with no seaming. You weave in the tail and you weave in the last tail, the beginning and the end tail. And that's all you do. It's completely seamless. No bulky seams on the insides of your slippers. See how there's no seams? No seams anywhere. Just like these lovely little booties. Same thing. Using the same technique, but this time I'm using it where it's all the way around, knit in the round, instead of using half one side that is knit flat. This is the traditional way of doing it, but the non-traditional way, because you are going to flip it over to the pearl bumps and get your garter stitch on your slipper without having to seam. And you won't have these bulky seams anywhere that don't look that professional. You'll look so professional if you do it like this. They're like, how did you do it? And you're like, ah. <laughs> so she said you turn it over when you're doing it? You turn it over to make it? Yeah. Yeah. You just follow that pattern, Carolyn. You can do it. I know you can. Just don't think. Don't think about what you're traditionally supposed to do with Judy's Magic Cast on. Follow the directions. God is good. It works. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I hope that you enjoy that pattern. And don't forget to vote. Let's look and see who the winner was for this week for the prize. So we had the lovely Finito, and you said the fall colorways were for the winner. And um, don't forget to vote for this next week. We have the honey color or we have blue. And this is for Bravo Alpaca. So you guys vote on that, and then you'll be entered to win for next week. For this week, we have the lovely Finito, which is a non-superwash merino wool hand-dyed. And let's see who the winner is. I know my lovely husband, Jim, he wrote the winner for me, is um, Barbara Parsonet. Yay! Congratulations, Barbara. Parsonet. Parsonet. P-E-R-S-O-N-E-T-T-E. And you won this lovely finito, and it's the fall colorway. And all you have to do is get in touch with us at um, customer service at Alpaca Direct, and we can get your shipping address so that we can mail it to you. And I hope all of you have a great week. This next week, I was thinking I'm working on baby blankets, and I'm not sure what else I'm going to be working on. I'm trying to finish up all my baby stuff. And you're working so, on getting better. Getting yes, healthy. and I'm working on getting healthy, too. Oh, dear Lord, this has been a long haul. Anyway, I hope you all have a great week, and I will see you next Tuesday.